Welcome back to the shipyard. Today, top 10 Bajoran cards. It's not a big enough faction to break it down any further than that. In fact, it was a challenge to get 10 really good cards. But I did it. We're here. We're good. Making it work. Number 10, Phaser Strike. Specifically the one from Interceptor 8. Though, if you have to... You can use the one from Interceptor 5. It's okay. Won't, won't tell anybody. Make that work. Uh, this one costs 5, gives you 4 dice, range 1 to 3. But it's used on a base 2 attack die ship. I hope, beyond hope, that we'll see a recosting of this eventually. I think this is something that will happen eventually. But it is what it is right now. It's an action if you want skill 10. I never do it as an action. Because you need to disable it to perform the attack. And then that's an action to re-enable. And there you go. But it's bonus dice. It works pretty well. Uh, it's nice on alpha striking for interceptors. And, uh, and that's why it has a place on this list. It's not the best Bajoran card. But it's certainly not the worst. And if you bring it. You're not going to be laughed out of the tournament or anything. Not that you should ever be laughed out of an event, but uh, yeah, Phaser Strike, it's got a place. Number nine, take me seriously, is the Denorius. I know it's not the best. I know it's got six stats. It's got one attack die. But it has two tech slots. And if you go back and you watch the Build Academy, where I focused on the Denorius, you see some of the things that it's capable of doing when you cross-faction with it. Adding slots to that ship makes it playable. Warp jumping makes it playable. Having it blink in and out having it be a disruption piece, having it be basically unkillable, makes it an annoying thorn in the side of your opponent. Does that win you games? No, but it stops you from losing games. And at that point, you're creating problems. So that's worth having a spot on this list. Plus, it's an awesome model. Number eight, Kira Norris, the target lock Kira. Great support card. Not the best captain by any means. Probably not even in my top 30 of captains. Just giving you the frame of reference here. But she's a captain that I sit here and I go, okay, I need to get more action economy. I want to make a torpedo fleet work. And you know what? With some of the previews we're seeing for these new rules, the new system, torpedo fleets might be a thing. Kira might have a place in the game again. As it stands right now, she's a somewhat playable Bajoran card. But she's here. Number seven, the Ratosha. It's not so much the Ratosha herself. It's everything that can be done with the ship. It's that you can put Assault Vessel Upgrade on it. It's that you can put Bajoran Militia. It's the named ability to get a Battle Station token whenever you move within range of another ship. All of those put together make this a pretty good support ship. It's never the ship I start building, but it's a good second, third ship in my fleet. Maybe even a fourth ship, depending on points. There's a lot here. This is a very viable ship. Certainly not regionals plus playable, but for certain OPs based on the scenario, based on what you're trying to do with it, it's got a place. It's got a place in the game. Number six is maneuverability, and I just talked about this yesterday, so I won't go too much into it, but the ability to fly onto a planet and sit there. Or not, but the ability to fly over a planet, to change your moves, options, it's good. 
I think it's one of those cards that's actually worth the points that you're paying for it. So, kudos to maneuverability. Number five, Bajoran Militia. Just mentioned it on the Rotosha. But having a card that gives you more attack dice, that's reusable, no disable, no discard, no time tokens, and gets better based on how many you can put on your ship up to max of three. That is an effect that makes it very worthwhile. Bajoran Militia was the first card that made me truly feel like Bajorans had a place in the game. It addressed the concern that they just didn't have enough firepower to truly work. And when they came out, I went, ah, okay, now we're going somewhere. Now we got something. Take it for what it's worth. It's a good card in my book. Number four is more than meets the eye. It's a simple card. It's a one-point card, and those are always a little innocuous. They're typically one of the last things you fit into your build, but this is one of those cards that makes certain combos just work. And when it is the missing puzzle piece, I have to give it credit for what it is. And what it is is ultimately a good card that, yeah, it only works once. But that one time, it's often all you need. So there you go. Number four, more than meets the eye. Number three is Tana Los. And he continues to get better the longer this game goes. And he will continue to get better in the future. Because he has more tech that he can hide under himself. And the more playable tech that exists in the game, the less idea you have what he's using. It's as simple as that. Because Tonalos could hide just about anything. And that makes him scary. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, doesn't work all that well in pure Bajoran. But once you get mixing, he is scary. Number two is Lee Nollis. And if you want to talk about a combo enabler, right here. This is the crew that... Uh, I shake my head. It's great for preventing opponents from messing with you. And you being able to save your own discard effects is a little ridiculous. But... It is what it is. Lenalis is is good. Uh, the combos that exist with Lenalis, Bev, Goval, Delta Shift, Centurion, David Marcus. Now, it's like how many ways do you need to prevent a discard? I think we have too many. I guess options. I guess I'm obligated to say that, but. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, yeah, regardless, Lenalis is good. Uh, number one card, Deep Space Nine, either version. The defense dice is probably better, but if you want to go the torpedo route, you can. If the feds get really good torpedoes, then definitely the torpedo DS9 becomes a lot more enticing. Uh, but that's looking towards the future. Right now in the present, Deep Space Nine is still the number one Bajoran card in the game, even though most people don't consider it Bajoran. But it is Bajoran. It shares a faction. So I'm taking a, the cop out. I don't care deal with it that's what i have to say uh, deep space nine is the only card here that's consistently really really good uh, i believe it's the only card from the entire bajoran faction that saw play at worlds uh, lee nolis certainly could have but just didn't to the best of my knowledge yeah deep space nine is way above uh, everything else in this faction and that's okay. So uh, that's my take on the top 10 Bajoran cards. I, if I'm missing something, let me know. Uh, Bajoran is not my area of expertise. I'm sorry. I really am. I also won't portray myself as the absolute expert here. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care, guys.